Welcome back. If you are tuning in for the first time, I would suggest you go and watch my previous part one video and maybe also my skinny not strong video so you have a little bit more background information. But otherwise, let's get into it. So today we are going to be delving into talking about the fitness expert. So the fitness expert is the second type of representation that I see within the industry. The first being the fit babe, which we discussed in the first video, and the second being the fitness expert. The fitness expert has really given the industry a new lease on life. And kind of see that the industry was losing a lot of credibility before the fitness expert. It was kind of a bit of a laughing stock. Um, you know, everyone was making fun of girls sipping on their watermelon BCAAs. The booty workouts were just starting to look ridiculous and be more show workouts than actual workouts. The fitness expert is like the antidote to all that fitness bullshit crap. And I suppose they're generally heralded as a bit of a knight in shining armor to the industry. The fitness expert positions themselves as knowledgeable, evidence-based and health focused and that they care about helping people through strength and fitness. However, the fitness expert legitimizes the hashtag strong not skinny standards and they provide us with the no BS method to achieve it. So who are they? They are usually a white, cis, hetero, able-bodied male. They are the relatable everyday man and they are the antidote to all the fake fitness BS that you see. They aim to provide honest and truthful information and want to take the BS out of fitness. So what do they post on Instagram? You'll see them posting information on calorie deficits for fat loss, reverse dieting, exercises to achieve a certain aesthetic, and may coach bikini competitors. Where will you find them? You might find them in the gym, you might find them filming a hashtag takedown video or reading an article from a health science journal. They love calorie deficits, scientific papers and quoting regularly from them. And they also love a good before and after, which demonstrates their evidence-based approach. They hate the word cheat day. It's a lifestyle, guys. They also aren't big fans of intuitive eating, booty cable workouts, and just like the Fit Babe, they hate skinny tees. The sales pitch is do what I say and you can achieve your dream body. Disclaimer before everyone starts getting really emotional. This is not attacking the fitness expert. I myself was a wannabe fitness expert. Fitness expert slash Fit Babe, but mostly Fit Babe, but fitness expert wannabe for sure. I think every Fit Babe is a fitness expert wannabe nowadays. And again, just like the Fit Babe, I'm not going in on a particular person or brand. It's more about what the fitness expert represents to the industry as a whole and how their narrative affects mainstream society. I'm not calling out individuals. This is not a call out video. I don't really see that those videos are helpful. I think we should attack the system. We can use people as evidence and work that and words that they've said as evidence to back up an argument. But to call out a person just kind of makes you look like a really great person and gives you that kind of hero role but it actually doesn't change anything and i don't want to turn the comments into a cesspool of attacking somebody else that doesn't actually achieve anything um what's the end goal the end goal is not to make yourself look like a hero the end goal is to change the system so let's talk about how we can change the system as opposed to attack attacking individuals for shit that you don't agree with or that you think is problematic because if that's what we're gonna do like yeah I'm like, I could say some shit about people. Individuals prop up the system and allow it to prosper. That's why it's so important to question, reflect, and interrogate everything you see on social media because there is a reason why people are posting what they're posting. So everyone, stay calm. Let's get into it. So the fitness expert is the person that has positioned themselves as the expert on all things fitness. So what is fitness according to them? So first, we want to take a look at what the majority of the content is that they share on their page. They use words like shred, tone, lean, and bulk to promote their workout guides. Words that are associated with changing your body or shrinking your body or just changing your aesthetic of your body. They often promote calorie restriction and calorie counting as a way to lose fat because hashtag abs made in the kitchen, everyone. They will often talk about eating in a calorie deficit. They will show the calorie counts of different foods to encourage weight loss. They often encourage their followers to keep a diary um, 
because they blame people for not being able to follow a diet or be compliant. You know, showing what somebody ate versus what they really ate. And I kind of think the problem with this is that even if it is true where people do lie about their calorie intake, which I've seen studies that prove this, like why are we blaming the person for not being able to follow the diet? Why is it not the diet that we're saying, oh look, this diet, like, this diet doesn't work as opposed to the person doesn't work. Why are we creating posts that blame the people as opposed to blaming the diet? Like that's where we should really be focusing our attention on not making people just feel shittier and shittier about their inability to control their appetite. They also like to post transformation photos on their page to kind of prove their evidence-based approach, often having photos that are kind of seen as bad before, which the client is generally fatter and softer, and the after where they're leaner and happier. It's evident that the fitness expert equates weight loss with fitness anesthetics. It's very rare that you'll see a fitness expert talking about fitness for all bodies, talking about weight stigma, uh, talking about the fact that diets don't work, talking about different bodies engaging in fitness and the importance of representation within the fitness industry. They really do suggest that losing weight or building muscle, looking a certain aesthetic, is the only reason and the only way to participate in fitness. Now, there is still a lot of fitness experts' advice which is really helpful. I myself have learned from fitness experts such as improving my squat form or figuring out how much protein my body needs or specific exercises to strengthen my posture. I still think there's a place for fitness experts within the industry. But we as influencers, we have something to sell you. We have a brand to build. We will be inclined to post what sells that. And Really, honestly speaking, I've been on both sides of the coin. I have encouraged women to change their bodies because they'll look great and they'll feel great and they'll be so confident. And I've also been on the other side where I am encouraging women to work out just because it feels good. Which one do you think has the highest selling point? Which one do you think converts people to buy into your program? Which one do you think makes you money? Like, I can tell you honestly, the first one makes you money. If you want it, you could look at my books and I could prove to you like how much more money you make selling that standard to people versus selling the other standard. If somebody is teaching you something online, you have to remember that they have an agenda to this. And that's why I say before, always question what you see because there's a reason behind somebody is leaving out certain information or only telling you certain information. Like me, I have a product to sell you. But speaking honestly, I know that diets don't work and a pile of shit and so I refuse to participate in that industry anymore and so I refuse to sell you a diet plan. I believe in food freedom for all and want to encourage exercise as a means of joy as opposed to a means of wanting to change your body. And I produce content that backs up my product that I want to sell you, my fitness app. That is the reason I produce this content, the reason that I produce all my content on Instagram is to sell you the product that I have because I have a belief behind that product. And many fitness experts have a product that they want to sell you as well. Their product is usually a product that encourages you to change your body into a leaner, muscular physique. So it's not in their best interest to warn you about, hey, this diet probably won't work because there's not really a diet that people have kept off the weight for longer than five years. There's no study of that. Or um, this might not be the best for you if you're a chronic dieter or if you have suffered from an eating disorder in the past. Like, There's so much that you'll leave out if you're trying to sell somebody a product um, and that you won't want to put out there. You're very selective and careful in the content that you create when you have a product to sell. I can only speak as honestly as I can because I've been on both sides of the coin. So of course, the fitness expert will encourage weight loss and dieting. And just like the fit babe, they don't want you to think that dieting is unattainable or unachievable for them. They want you to think it's really easy and that the reason you fail so many times before is because you either haven't done the correct diet or you um, don't have enough control. It's, it's your fault. The product's great. The product's amazing. It's just you've been getting it wrong. So here are some reasons why the fitness expert's advice should just be taken with... A grain of salt. Recommending a calorie deficit for weight loss is not a neutral intervention. It has been proven in many studies that restricting calories, the definition of eating in a calorie deficit, has many negative physical and mental side effects that can actually worsen your health. Numerous studies have proved and shown that weight lost is 
not likely to be sustainable in the long term. If dieting advice is given, then the health risks associated with dieting should also be disclosed as well, along with the evidence that there is no successful weight loss intervention. Many experts that give out advice are actually not dietitians or nutritionists. I understand that you can, you're free to talk about food, um, but giving out specific advice regarding food when many of them have not done the years of training that it takes to be a nutritionist. Taking advice from a person on Instagram that doesn't know your personal history can be really dangerous because we all have different bodies. Perhaps we have um, a history of dieting that somebody doesn't know about. We could have a chronic illness. Um, we have different environments, financial situations, biology. It's very difficult, if not impossible, to give out cookie cutter diet advice on Instagram. And if we are giving out that advice on Instagram, the very least we should do is be providing it with a warning and disclosures. When registered dietitians work with clients, they take the person's medical history and background into account before offering any sort of intervention. There are so many conditions that are affected by a diet that it's much better to go to a doctor or a dietitian than to learn off an Instagram post. And I'm sure just like any other industry, there are outliers. Not all fit babes are like this. Not all fitness experts are like this, of course. But unfortunately, many fitness experts are simply masquerading as sneaky diet culture. It's much harder to recognize this form of sneaky diet culture. It's much easier to recognize diet culture when it's being sold to us through an image of, say, Kayla's abs. We're like, aha, diet culture. And then we see someone talking about the best macro split for fat loss doesn't seem as diet culture -y. But really what the fitness expert is selling us is the same old diet culture bullshit wrapped up in a glossy new package. Because the fitness expert is still focused on equating fitness with intentional weight loss and leanness with aesthetics, the goalpost has shifted. The fitness expert promotes hashtag strong not skinny as the new fitness standard. The fitness expert does claim to really promote strength and health and fitness. But if these claims are true, I want you to ask yourself these questions. Do they mention all the harmful effects associated with dieting? Do they represent strong, fit, fat bodies on their feed and not just as before and afters? Do they regularly discuss the social determinants of health and that health behaviors like diet and exercise? account for a quarter of differences in health outcomes between groups? And do they regularly talk about the impact of weight stigma on health? If you answer yes to these questions, then you can confidently say that your fitness expert is a good boy. Well done. Well done, Slytherin, well done. So to sum it up for you, the problem with the fit babe and the fitness expert is how they represent fitness to the mainstream market. It continues to center and put people on a pedestal who are lean, muscular, cis, able-bodied, hetero, and white. It equates only lean, muscular bodies with health, strength, and fitness. Makes fitness synonymous with intentional weight loss, leanness, and aesthetics. This type of marketing in fitness perpetrates fat phobia by promoting exercise as a way to shrink or manipulate body size and for the prevention of being fat. It suggests that fat is inherently bad as the only goals that we have are to change our body from a bad fat body to a good thin muscular body. It sees fat as something that we should fear and something that we should strive to get rid of by any means. It equates only thin bodies to good desirable bodies and something that we should aspire to be. Body composition is only one aspect of fitness but it's become the main selling point and a lucrative one at that. By tapping into diet culture and perpetrating the idea that a woman's value and worth is linked to her weight, body shape, and size. So where do we go from here? I don't wanna leave you on a negative note because I do think that positive change is on the way. I'm gonna be positive. I feel like you know 2020 is gonna be our year for some really good growth within the fitness industry. So what we really need to do is go to the root of the problem. We need to fight diet culture and fat phobia by destigmatizing fatness. So we can do this by 
changing what the goals of engaging in fitness are. Changing from weight loss, aesthetics, and wanting to change your body, to working out simply because of how it makes you feel. Focusing on the health benefits of working out because fitness can be really healing. We need to change what fitness looks like from a look of aesthetics and leanness and muscle and curves all in the right places. Changing it to fitness is what fits for you. That might be going for a swim, that might be doing weights in the gym, that might be pole dancing. Whatever makes you feel good and brings you joy from moving your body, it doesn't have to have that association with the type of fitness. When we only choose to engage in fitness because of the aesthetic, aesthetic changes that we want to make to our body, that might be when you dread your fitness routine or you feel that fitness isn't for you. I do think fitness is for everybody. And if you haven't found a type of fitness that works for you yet, you might just have been trying the wrong ones. There's so many different types of ways to engage in fitness. Weight training is just one of many. So it's about picking what works for you and finding something that you think is sustainable. And it's sustainable because you enjoy it, not just because you're engaging in it because you want to lose fat or change your body. We need to change who can participate in fitness from those who fit an aesthetic ideal with a lean muscular body type and those who are trying to lose weight to understanding that fitness is for everybody no matter what your goals are or what you look like everybody can engage in fitness i was talking to somebody the other day where they were saying because they're a fat woman that whenever people see them in the gym they simply assume that they must have weight loss goals and she doesn't have weight loss goals she really likes feeling genuinely strong in the power that brings her and she enjoys how it makes her feel. But because we're so used to coupling exercise and weight loss together or changing your body that many people find it difficult to see a fat woman working out and not assume that they might just be doing it because they enjoy it. There is that real um, coupling of fitness and weight loss that I think is really important to tear down. Okay video is done i hope you liked it um if you did i would love if you subscribe gave it a little thumbs up let me know what you think in the comments below sometimes i read them sometimes i don't you never know what you're gonna get what mood i'm in um so yeah hopefully we can chat next time more videos will be are coming your way